the homeowner asks the carpenter, how do I know these two doors are the same size? The carpenter says, they're alternate exterior doors. And that joke will be a lot funnier after this lesson when you learn about those relationships. So now we're talking about parallel lines and angles. You already know the names of the angle pairs, but parallel lines are going to set up special relationships with those. So first of all, we're going to do an explore, exploration. Angles created by parallel lines and transversals you're going to find are either going to be congruent or they're going to be supplementary. And if you want to go play with these yourselves, here are the links but I'm going to go ahead and show you in this video how the relationships are established. This is an applet I've created where you can see corresponding angles for parallel lines. So this red angle corresponds with that red angle, this green goes with that green, that blue goes with that blue. And the interesting, uh, if you move the angles here, if you move the line, I can change the angles and you can, this line's going to stay parallel and you can see how the corresponding angles change. Now why do cor are corresponding angles congruent? It's actually the only postulate in the things we're looking at today. It's assumed as obvious or given. And why is that? Well, assuming the lines are parallel and I move them closer and closer so they're right on top of each other, you can see that the two red angles are going to be right on top of each other. My, yes, my line shrunk a little bit, but you can see right here the corresponding angles are going to match. And that's why that is a postulate rather than a theorem. That is that corresponding angles are congruent. Now here's another applet I've created where you can look at both alternate interior and alternate exterior angles. You can change the green angle by adjusting this slider. You can also move where the lines are relative to each other by dragging the yellow points. Now right now you can see that it's showing that the alternate interior angle to this green angle. So you can see it's on opposite sides of the transversal and it's inside. And you're probably noticing that these two values match. What if I look at the alternate interior angle for the blue angle? Oh, that's this one right here. See how it crosses a transversal and the two blue angles match. If I show the alternate exterior angle for the purple angle, those also match. And the alternate exterior angle for the red angle also matches. So based on these, since the sizes are the same, I would guess that they are congruent. This applet shows same side interior and exterior angles. So you can see here, this green angle goes with this green one. And they're same side interior angles. Well, they're definitely not congruent. You can see that 52 degrees is a lot smaller than 128. Um, they're also not complementary because that means they would add up to 90 degrees. I'm going to guess they're supplementary. But let me look, first of all, when I change it, does that make sense? So if I have 102 and 78, I'll do an easy one. 100 if I can. Ah. And there you go, 180. So you can see those two definitely add up to 180. Let me do the same side interior for the blue. Yes, those two add up for 180. Same side exterior, so they're outside. Those also add to 180. And same thing, same side exterior for the red. Those also add to 180. So since all these angle pairs add to 180, I'm going to conclude that they are supplementary. So which angles were congruent based on our exploration? We found out that corresponding angles are congruent. In fact, that's the only postulate because you could reason that when the angles went together, this angle is going to be the sliding right over that angle, so they have to match and be the same. Alternate interior angles are also congruent, as are alternate exterior angles. So to solve for an unknown when you're dealing with this type of angle, set the angle pair equal to each other, the same way we did vertical angles, and then solve for the unknown variable. Supplementary angles 
Well, the remaining pairs were the same side interior angles and the same side exterior angles. So if they're on the same side of the transversal and they're either the exterior or the interior, then those are automatically supplementary angles. To solve for a known known, since they're supplementary, you're going to add the angles and set it equal to 180 degrees. So a lot like the work we did with linear pairs and supplementary angles in general. So your equation looks like the first angle plus the second angle equals 180. Here's an example. I want to find a measure of each of the angles uh, below given that the measure of angle A is 57 degrees. And I forgot to add this in the wording, the lines are parallel. So we're only working with parallel lines cut with a transversal today. Apologize for leaving that out. So I'm putting in the 57 degrees and my favorite angle pairs are vertical angles. So I automatically go across the way and put 57. Now I can go ahead and use my relationships to say that since angle A and angle C are corresponding angles, that has to be 57 degrees. Or you could even say angle F and angle C are alternate interior angles. So that has to be 57 degrees. They're congruent. Then I'm going to do vertical angles to get angle H. And now I know I've got some linear pairs here. I know that the angles when they add, so this 57 plus this mystery angle, has to equal 180. And I'm going to get 123. Again, using vertical pairs, and then I could say corresponding angles, E and G, well, that has to be 123. Or I could have said alternate interior angles, which makes it 123. And then finally, angle D is 123. Now we're going to look at some unknowns. So this is going to be a little trickier. So I'm going to go ahead and put these values in. ABD is 32C plus 4. And FCG right here is 17C plus 2. Notice a parentheses around the C plus 2. Well, this angle pair right here, they're on opposite sides of the transversal. So they're alternate. They're an alternate type of angle, which should automatically tell you they're congruent. But just make sure they're alternate, both either interior or exterior. And yes, they are alternate exterior angles, and those are congruent. So I'm going to set these two equal to each other. Now I need to distribute the 17C. So now I have 17Cs, 17Twos, that's 34. Subtract 17C from both sides, and I get 15C plus 4 equals 34. That was the subtraction property of uh, equality, by the way. And using the subtraction property of equality, I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides. So I get 15C is 30. Then I can use the division property of equality, divide both sides by the same thing, 15, and I get C equals 2. Now I can take this 2 and substitute it back in for C, and I go 32 times 2 plus 4, or 64 plus 4, which is 68. I could also put the, the 2 in here just to double check, and I get 4 times 17, which is also 68. So let me go ahead and put the 68 degrees here and the 68 degrees there. Then I can use vertical angles, see there, and there, across there. Or I could use um, corresponding angles or alternate interior angles to find those other missing values. Now I know the other angles have to be supplementary to this 68. So I'll go 180 minus 68, a little bit of a shortcut, we'll live today. So that's 112. So I put 112 degrees here, vertical angle, uh, corresponding angle, these two are corresponding, and then another vertical angle. I love vertical angles, they're the easiest, least confusing to fill in. Now for our last example, we're going to look at angle EBD is now 3x plus 5, and FCG is 2x minus 5. Well, what kind of angle pair is this? They're both on the same side of the transversal, and they're both outside. So they're same side exterior angles, all right? Being same side exterior, then that means they are supplementary, which means I should add the two angles together and set it equal to 180. So 3x plus 5 plus 2x minus 5 equals 180. 
Now I can combine like terms. Five, uh, three x plus two x is five x. Five minus five is zero, so that kind of goes away. And then divide both sides by five, and I get x is 36. So I'll substitute into here the three x plus five. There's the 36. Three times 36 is 108, plus five is 113. I'm going to go ahead and substitute it also. Well, let me fill in my 113s. 113 there, vertical angles. Alternate interior angles, vertical angles. Very fast way to do it. Okay, this one I'm going to go ahead and substitute in the 36 as well. 2 times 36 minus 5, 72 minus 5 is 67. I kind of wanted to do that just to double check to make sure I had the right values. And yes, those two are supplementary. So that's 67 degrees, 67, 67, 67. So for further reflection, some things to think about. How can you tell which angles are congruent? So which angle pairs do you automatically know to set equal to each other? How do you know which angles are supplementary? How do you set up equations for congruent angles? And how do you set up equations for supplementary angles?